yes, you guys looked like to, you turned things around midway late in the third quarter there. What was kind of the difference for you? Well, there was an air of desperation. I mean, we've, <laughs> the last two games, third quarters have been, you know, our Achilles heel. Talked about it at the half that we have to, our approach coming out of halftime has got to be better and started slow. And thankfully we were able to get a little bit of momentum, you know, which I think carried over to the fourth. How big was Trez coming into the third for that and how old for that matter? Oh, it was big. I mean, we had to kind of junk it up, get guys in and out, get the matchups we liked and throw multiple bodies at them. I mean, they were playing with a level of comfort, you know, even in the fourth, you know, we, we obviously outscored them, but, but the defense wasn't great. We got the stops we needed when we needed them, but, um, you know, I think it's gotta be by committee. It, uh, it, at times it's okay to win ugly. I know I've said that quite a bit, but it's true. Spencer kind of acts like it's old hat when he closes the game like this, but uh, just how big has it been when he gets going like that in the fourth quarter? I mean, there's no words for it. I mean, it's, it's, those are game winning plays. Um, the fact that he's got the, the moxie and the comfort level to step up, not afraid of the moment. And when, thankfully we have several guys like that on this group that are okay in, in those big moments and, and they've produced. You guys are seven and one at home now. Um, only the Warriors have been better. They're eight and one. Just what has been the key to you guys being so good here? I mean, some of it is our home court. I mean, the crowd has been terrific. It's uh, you feel it. And, and in those moments, I think it, it helps drive our guys, gives them an extra boost. Um, I think most teams are probably better at home than on the road. But the fact that we are where we are, I think it bodes well for our comfort level here, but also our fans and the, uh, uh, the atmosphere that that, that creates. And, and what was the key to uh, defending the three tonight? I think they only made seven and they uh, didn't make a single one in the fourth quarter. Well, I mean, once again, the urgency. Um, it's a priority for us every night, but, you know, the volume of shooting they, they can put out on the floor. You know, um, just having awareness, the urgency to get to those guys, run them off. Um, and then you know, we saw in the last possession, just keep coming. It's uh, when there are breakdowns, um, cover for each other, keep flying around and get a late contest at worst. But make sure we put those shooters under duress. Was it the same root cause of the turnovers tonight? To some, some degree. Um, and some of it, too, is just, you know, you, you play in a crowd and you, the ball just gets, you know, gets popped loose. Um, but for the most part, you know, they weren't at uh, as many live ball, which I can live with. Dead ball turnovers aren't great. You're not getting a possession. You're not getting a look, you know, an opportunity to score. But um, at least it's not a jailbreak the other way. When Brad was really cooking tonight, what was going well for him, either competing against the defense or something he was able to kind of find? Uh, the pick and rolls were great. And, uh, you know, we were trying to orchestrate certain cross matches. Um, but I thought late in the fourth, um, once we got the cross match, we, we didn't stop and stare at it. We continued to keep energy in the ball and move it. And just that little bit of movement creates openings, so it creates seams, creates a little indecision. Uh, and we got some good looks out of it. You said you'd rather not be in the position uh, to be down, you know, double digits in the third quarter. But uh, again, you know, another comeback, you know, Boston, Cleveland, you know, New Orleans, and then, and then tonight. What does it say about this team to have another second half comeback? Uh, you know, it speaks to our resolve um, that, uh, you know, we just can't quit. I think it's, uh, it's in our fiber and it's, it's a great, you know, attribute that, you know, we're not going to just hang our hats when things aren't going well. Of course, you're going to be frustrated, you know, but it's how you respond. And, you know, I think we've showed, you know, time and time again, and we're going to have to continue to do that because uh, we're going to be in a lot of close games, but um, that we're just not going to fold to say, you know what, hey, tonight, tonight's not our night. Keep fighting. Uh, Kyle with, with some great defense there on that last possession. He had a big defensive rebound and then made some big free throws, you know, through three quarters. It wasn't, you know, a great night for him, but for him to play really great down the stretch, what did you see out of him there? Well, I saw the, the, a little bit of frustration. You know, I think he was trying to guard and, picked up some fouls, um, the shots weren't falling, you know, and at times I think it's easy to say, you know what, what's in it for me? So, you know, I have to give my, I got to give him a lot of credit because he stayed with it, you know, and it, he, he wasn't having a night where he was getting the open looks or making, you know, the big shots, but he stayed with it on the defensive end. He, he impacted the game. And and then KCP, you know, he, he obviously had a tough task, you know, being on, up, you know, Jimmy Butler for a lot of the game. But for him to hit those threes, you know, late in the fourth quarter, he still have legs under him. Yeah. What does that show about him as a, as a guy that can contribute? He's, for he's you? a pro. He's been he's been in these moments. I mean, this is nothing. He, he won the finals, so he, he's not afraid to, you know, take on the challenge of having to guard the marquee matchup from night to night. Um, I thought Kuz, you know, had his opportunity. Um, you know, Pope obviously does quite a bit, 
but to be able to step up, make those plays when we needed them, um, just shows the comfort level. And I think that just is uh, it's a hallmark of who they are, where they've been, and the fact that, you know, uh, they're not phased by, the, by this. So it's, it's a great comfort to me and obviously our group. Josh. Wes, I know this is only a regular season game and it's only game 16, but is it possible that a win like this to stem a two game losing streak against uh, within your division is actually an important win? That, I know they're all important, but does this have a added importance to it? I mean, to some degree, I mean, I think, you know, anytime you're playing a marquee team like the Heat, and you come away with a win, you, you got to be proud of your group. Um, but I also think, you know, we don't want to find ourselves in that position of getting down, you know, 16 or 17 in the in the second half. But uh, the fact that we were able to climb out, um, you know, it's, you know, once again, it's a gritty, it's a gritty group, you know, and it, we don't always play perfect, but uh, we keep competing. So it's, uh, I think it does show people, you know, another glimpse of who we are. How much of a momentum swing or momentum energy generator was Powell's uh, bat away when he was switched on to, he denied the entry pass to Butler down mm -hmm. low. And uh, to what degree did that give your team some added juice and, and energy? Well, I mean, he as a player <laughs> brings that added energy and juice, which is terrific. You know, those type of plays are not uncharacteristic for him. Uh, so the fact that he came up with that play against a switch, a bigger opponent, uh, it just shows his fight and his competitive spirit. Um, you know, I think it, those are momentum plays, to your point. Um, and, and that was in a big juncture of the game, so it, it did swing in our favor. But he's made plays like that throughout this young season, and I'm sure he's made those uh, those type plays throughout his career. Um, but his, his energy is infectious. Um, his defensive tenacity, um, that, that's uh, part of who he is and how he plays. So it, uh, it's great to, to see it in that moment, but it's also a, a hallmark for him. I know I can guarantee, I guarantee when he steps on the floor, he's going to bring that dimension. Neil. Hey, Coach, um, just what's your general philosophy on using your challenge? Do you essentially not want to use it at all in the first half? And did you consider using it on that Brad foul call against Butler to, towards the end? I, I did consider using it, um, but I felt it was too much time um, left. You know, with, with one challenge, the new rules allow you to, you know, challenge for possession in, you know, only in the last two minutes. But um, you know, those are, it's a big play. So um, you want to hold on to it as long as possible and hope you don't find your, you know, the need to use it uh, early in the game. If it happens where, you know, the third or fourth foul early in the third um, on a marquee guy, you feel like you, you just, you're certain about it, then maybe you use it. But in general, I'd rather hold on to it for those in the game situations. You ended up needing it for the Dinwiddie play. So fair point there. Um, on the last possession, you know, Harold gets switched on to Butler. Are you, is the call just to play everything straight up? Did you guys consider fouling there at all? Well, we talked about fouling, um, you know, inside of three back to the basket, you know, but it's tough as that ball, as the clock winds down rather, and, and you know, he's dribbling outside of three. It, it just makes you real nervous. You know, the guy raises up, you got your arms over the ball, you foul him. Now you're at the mercy of the whistle. And, you know, if they say he's in the act, uh, so you know, we, we talked about switching before and after the ball comes in, which we've done quite a bit in those scenarios, and uh, it worked in our favor. I thought Trez did a great job, you know, pressing up, taking him off the three. If anything, give up the two. Um, don't overhelp. Let him lay it in. Now we, you know, obviously have some time to kill, but we have possession. And last thing, uh, Kuzma missed the last two free throws. Bam gets the heave off at the last second. Anything going through your mind when you hear when you see it go off the back there? Yeah, that thing might, might have gone in. <laughs> uh, it's one of those crazy plays, but, you know, you have to play the game throughout, you know, play it to the uh, final bell. Um, and we got lucky. Thanks, Coach. Wayne. Hey, Coach. Uh, these game back-to-back -back games, I'm almost like a mini playoff series. What adjustments were you most proud of tonight? I thought we were a little bit more physical. Um, you know, I think our, our overall approach was better. Um, with, with their level of physicality. Um, obviously, we got in foul trouble early, and it took Trez, it took Gaff out of the game, uh, which allowed them to junk it up a bit. You know, they, they, they could switch, you know, one through five, and it makes it really tough to, to run offense and create flow, momentum, and spacing. 
um, in those situations. So um, I'm happy that we could weather that storm. Uh, but but in general, I thought, you know, Butler had it going. Um, we, we made an adjustment on him late in the last five, I think 540. He, he scored two points on those last two free throws, but I thought we did a better job on him late um, to kind of nullify um, his impact. And lastly, Coach, we always say these type of wins are character wins. When you look back at this game, what stands out uh, most to you about tonight's victory? Say that last part again, I'm sorry. What stands out to you tonight about uh, tonight's victory? Well, just I mean, once again, our resolve, the fact that we just, you know, we hung in there. Um, and I give our guys a lot of credit because, you know, there was some frustration early and it could have gone one of two ways, but we were able to pull together um, and guys, you know, competed. They stayed together and we were able to gut it out. So, you know, it, to your point, it, it, yeah, it is a character win. Uh, it's a gritty win. Um, it's a divisional win. So it's, you know, a lot of good things, you know, behind this. Um, but we also can take a lot of things and learn from, you know, how, how do we fall out, find ourselves in that hole? How do we come out in the you know, second half and not have those third quarter stretches? So, um, you know, still a lot of positives, but yeah, it's good to win and, and also learn a few things. You guys came back from down 16 points. Um, it was probably a, a game where you guys won ugly, maybe you could say. Uh, we'll, we'll, like, what does it say about this team to win a game like this, where you score 15 points in the second quarter? Uh, it means a lot. You know, we, we, we're a team that, you know, is never going to give up. Uh, we're going to fight to the end. Uh, you know, we're going we're gonna to leave it on the court. Uh, so, and we, we show it from time to time, you know, uh, game, game, every game. And we, that's our DNA, you know, we just fight. And you had uh, 10 points in the fourth quarter, three threes. What just uh, led to you getting going on offense? Just, just taking the shots, you know, feeling confidence uh, when I'm taking them shots, knowing that they're going to, um, I'm going to knock them down. And just, you know, trying to stay in a rhythm. You know, I, I'm, I'm shooting. I've been in this little slump. Uh, so I'm just trying to continue to shoot the ball and just, you know, get, get out of that slump. KCP, even when you win ugly, you have to do the right things at the right time. What yes. were you guys able to take advantage of on offense, particularly in the fourth quarter? Um, you know, with sport mismatches, I want to say, you know, we was trying to get uh, either Brad or Spence downhill, you know, on Duncan Robinson or um, Hero, you know, uh, and try to create something here and there. Can I get a towel? Um, how comforting is it knowing that, you know, Spence always talks about he can hit those clutch threes. Obviously, you can. Kuz can come up with a big free throws. And you, does it give you a sense of security even when you're playing kind of like crazy? Uh, yeah. Um, you know, we, you know, grateful that, you know, we have a point guard that can score the ball like that. Um, you know, hit big shots like that as well. Um, but, you know, Spence is, is, is a full quarter player, I, I want to say. You know, he, he likes to, you know, get it, get it going in the fourth. Uh, and it's, it's been big for us, you know, to start the season off. Seven and one, seven and one at home uh, for you guys. Um, I think Golden State's the only team in the NBA with a better home record. What's that say about this team and, and how nice is it, you know, in the fourth quarter there when you guys are making a comeback and, and the crowd's really into it? Um, says a lot, you know. I'm smelling like a mouth. <laughs> <laughs> It says a lot, you know, uh, we, we, like I said, we, we a team that doesn't quit. You know, we, we continue to fight, you know, no matter what. A, a lot of turnovers uh, tonight, you know, Wes was talking about it earlier. Is there a thread that, that you can kind of connect to some of the recent games where you've had a lot of turnovers and any similarities between some of the turnovers or is it just focus? What, what, what is it? With um, some of the turnovers? I feel like there's a lot of similarities. Um, you know, last game, they pressured us a lot. You know, and we turned the ball over this game. They did the same, uh, and, and we turned the ball over. Um, but uh, we do got to do a better job of when that, when that's happening, you know, showing ourselves to the ball um, and just being available. Uh, it's a lot of times that we, our guy was getting trapped and we wasn't available, you know, to get the outlet pass um, and it eventually turned into a turnover. How big a boost was the crowd? Uh, I mean, the crowd energy is always big. You know, you you, you don't want to be in an arena and you, you come back like that and, and, and it's dead. You know, we 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 look for that energy. You know, that 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 feeds our energy. 
Uh, and you know, we were, that 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 just saying that this speeding in uh, off the um, crowd energy is, is always big. Helps you lock in. Uh, I mean, I hope we already locked in. Uh, but no, it doesn't. It just you know, it just give us that 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 energy, that that boost that we need. You know, that extra win. Uh, knowing that we got to you know grind it out. Uh, right now, um, at this moment, uh, you know, that energy is, is always a, a big key, you know, when you want to come back or you're trying to come back. They're a uh, top 10 team in terms of three point percentage. You held them to seven threes, zero threes in the fourth. Um, what allowed you guys to just kind of like lock down the perimeter when you needed it to? Uh, I mean, we knew they had the shooters out there, uh, at, 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 at sometimes, um, but you know, we. You know, we we pride on our defense as well. You know, we that's what we do when we practice that every day. You know, so our defensive scheme, where we knew it was gonna get a lot of threes, uh, and they did. And when we was played them in Miami, uh, so we tried to you know we went back to the drawing board, and we we tried to cut out all that, try to force them into uh, tough contest, tough contested twos. I'm sorry, Josh. KCP, to win a game like this the way your team won it, to come back, to have everyone contribute, how, how much does that help build this team's identity, whatever the identity is? Um, it helps a lot, you know, just knowing that, you know, we're all there together. You know, we can't, can't win, you know, with one person just doing it. Uh, it's a team effort, you know, on both sides of the floor. And... I feel like every night we, you know, we 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 show that, you know, we show that we we connected, you know, uh, and we all here on on the same page, you know, and that's the win games. Was uh, Powell Neto's bad away when he was cross matched against Butler? They tried to feed an empty uh, an entry pass to to Jimmy Butler, and he batted away. Your team got some fast break points on it. How much of an energy boost is a play like that. Um, I mean, I, th I don't. I, I remember the play. Uh, I don't know if we were down or up at the time, uh, but that was a, a, a uh, Jimmy did have a mismatch to try to throw it in there. You know, he got his hands on the on on the ball, and you know, we just took it in transition. Uh, and you know, I, I want to say we scored the ball. I'm, I'm not sure. <laughs> I just remember it was a great defensive play at the time, you know, it, it, and it's, the crowd got into it once we got the stop, you know, and it, it carried overs. Thank you very much. Neil. Hey, KCP, uh, Denny had the one technical foul. He slammed the ball and you and Brad kind of went over to him immediately. What were you trying to convey to him? Just keep your composure. You know, he we he done it last game, you know. Uh I wanna say last home game, he do it the same thing. Uh but you know, we all get emotional when it when we we play defense and we don't think it's a foul and they call it. Um, uh, but it, it was just emotion. You know, we were just trying to tell him to keep his composure. And I think it was at the wrong time, I wanna say. I think it, I wanna say we was either up or down or coming back at the time. Uh, and that tech, you know, could either it could have went both ways. Uh, and, you know, we just talked about it. Just calm down, you know, keep your composure. You know, basically, great defense. You know, that was, they call a lot of uh, nine fouls out there. But see more see. But it was great defense. And then in the third quarter, Miami goes on their run early in the quarter. You guys take a timeout. What's the conversation? What's being said in the timeout to, got, to kind of get you guys to how are you able to finish? Um. I mean, at the end of the day, I feel like we we know who we are. You know, we have been down in that situation before, um, and we know we have the talent. You know, the the defensive pressure that we can apply. You know, to to get us back into that game. Um, so we we don't come to the bench. You know, with the, after that timeout, we all just you know calm down. You know, say we need to just lock up, lock in on defense, get stops. And, you know, we're going to come down and score the ball regardless. Thanks, KCP. Last question to Peter. Hi, Peter Ortiz on Fire Media. 
Uh, you guys have had a great season so far, while the team that traded you has been a failure. Do you get any satisfaction from that? I didn't hear the last part. What was that? <laughs> do, do you get any satisfaction from that? Um, I'm I'm happy where I'm at. You know, um, not really. I wasn't really you know too upset about you know what happened with the trade or anything. You know, Brad is a a, a great friend. Um. And we always, you know, talked about playing with each other. So it was no biggie for me. Uh, already coming off a championship, you know, and it's time to move on. You guys were down 16 points, only scored 15 in the second quarter. You found a way to win. Um, what did it take to pull out this victory? Uh, first praise my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Honestly, it was... It was our, our will and resiliency. You know, we we got stops at the end of the game. Um, went on a big run in the third, going into the fourth. And uh, it's made some big shots down the stretch. KCP, Spence, Kuz, big free throws. Uh, we just made some big plays down the stretch. You know, we, we made it tough on them. They went on a big run and uh, kind of got ugly for a minute, but we, we, we stood our ground. We didn't get rattled. And, uh, you know, we kind of, we snapped out of it and made a nice run. You guys kind of won an ugly game. I mean, it required defense and, and kind of being gritty a little bit. What does it say about this team to be able to pull out a win like that against a team like the Heat, where that's kind of their brand of basketball? Uh, it's very special, you know, because for us, we just want to continue to build on what we have. We know it's a lot of new faces, new coach, new system. Like, it's all new. Like, it's we're, what, 20, about 20 games in now, so it's, Everybody is still learning. Like we're still learning on the fly, but it's amazing to see that we're able to put some wins together while we're still learning. So, um, you know, that's a great sign. We're just going to continue to build on that. And then once we 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 fix the things we need to on both ends, uh, I think we'll we'll definitely definitely hit the ground running for sure. Then we get guys back healthy uh, to make us that much better. So, the sky's the limit for us. Brad, what makes Spencer so good in the fourth quarter? Uh, Spencer's poised. He doesn't get rattled. Um, you know, he stays under control. He's, he's a confident player. Um, and, you know, he takes tough shots and makes tough shots. So, um, I don't know. Spence, is, he's one of a kind. He was special tonight for sure. I need him like that all the time. You guys are 7-1 and one at home. What's the atmosphere been like so far uh, this season uh, for your home games? It's been awesome. We, we love it. We feed off the energy. Um, it's very playoff-like atmosphere. Uh, you know, have 20,000 plus tonight, that's that's amazing, you know. So we we definitely feed off of that. We love the support. We need it. Um, we feed off their energy, you know, and we understand the city has been missing this for a long time. We miss it as an organization, you know, so we understand that that correlation and we want to get we want to get the city back rocking again. So, you know, we're off to a good start, but we still got a lot of work to do and always having a good home crowd helps us. So keep coming. Do you guys enter home games thinking, hey, you know, we got to win these games. These are ones that we can't, you know, afford to lose. Is, is that kind of the mindset of playing at home? Is that any different than when you go on the road? Uh, I mean, not necessarily. I mean, I'm always I'm always big. I always say protect the crib. We always got to protect the crib. You know, we we can go on the road. We know how, it's tough to win in this league as is, but we have to protect our house. You know, we have to come in and be ready to go from start to finish. And I think we did that. Granted, they went on their run, but a lot of times when we play these teams, we're, I don't know what it is, but at home, we're really rocking. We're really ready to go. So um, that's important for us moving forward, especially when it comes down to playoffs and seeding and especially playing Miami and Charlotte coming up again. These games matter. So uh, we got to make sure we're ready to go. And you and a lot of the other guys have mentioned the resiliency, you know, when you're down in the, in the second half or like in overtime against Boston. Okay. Aside from that, when, when you do get down in those situations, double digits tonight and, and you know, some of these other games, how do you not kind of get inside your own head or how do you not, you know, maybe freak out and say, oh, you know, it's not, it's not our night. How do you kind of stay composed? Oh, uh, you just control what you can control, man. Uh, I always say if we can control making shots, we'll be 100% from the field. You know, we wouldn't miss a shot. Uh, you know, a lot of stuff is out of our control, you know, so we just, we just stay with it, stay in the moment, you know, stay engaged. Um, you know, and I think we did that tonight. We didn't, didn't point the finger. We weren't arguing. Wasn't you know? We weren't mad at each other. Like we were really. We were just locked in, and we we're like, okay, we got snap out of it. Let's do it collectively. That was something I said before the game. We can't win this game individually. You know, we we're not going to try to do that, and that's not going to work if we do. So, 
uh, we rallied together collectively on both ends and we made it work. Hey, Brad, just about the crowd noise. Um, was it as loud as you've heard it in recent memory? Uh, from having no fans, you know, a year ago, yeah. Uh, it's extremely loud, but uh, it's, 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 it's definitely noticeable. And, um, you know, we're very appreciative of it. You know, the support we've gotten all year and we're just going to continue to get better. We're going to continue to push. We, like I said before, we still have guys out. Like we're, we're putting things together on the fly. Um, you know, still learning, you know, each other's strong suits, weaknesses, and all while, you know, trying to prefer, perfect coaches, you know, chemistry and what he wants our style of play to be. So uh, everything is still a work in progress, but, you know, like I told Chase earlier, for us to rack together some wins like we are, it's very promising, you know, but we got to stay humble and hungry. The, the Heat are um, top 10 in three-point percentage, and you guys held them to seven threes tonight, uh, zero threes in the fourth quarter. Um, how big is your three-point defense been, especially when you can lock it down late like that? We have to. Um, it's imperative. Those threes hurt. You know, um, those are <laughs> daggers. You know, those those drain the energy from the team. Those are the type of plays that can, like, you know, really kind of diminish you at the end of, end of games and in the fourth, you know, giving up those big shots and they kind of drain you. Um, you know, we, we did a good job of stopping it. We know Tyler's a ter terrific scorer. Duncan can shoot it. Jimmy can score. Uh, we know Kalo can shoot it. Uh, Struz can shoot it. Like they have a bunch of guys who, that's what they do, you know? So uh, coach emphasized it and re-emphasized it. You know, Pat, same thing at timeouts, you know, just making sure that we run guys off the line, knowing our personnel. And I think that's a big growth step for us too, is knowing who we're guarding, when we're guarding them, you know? Um, certain guys we run off the line, certain guys we don't, you know? Certain guys we help off strong, some guys we don't, so. We're getting better at that, but it's definitely still a work in progress. And um, I don't think we've asked you yet, but just what do you think about Tommy Shepard getting promoted to team president and getting a multi-year contract? I was happy for him. I didn't I didn't know till a little bit later in the day, but I was I was extremely ecstatic for him and happy for him, him and Sashi. Um, you know, they're definitely deserving of it and they work extremely hard. You know, I see Shepard here every single day. He's very in tune, he cares. Uh, he's an awesome person. And then, you know, he loves the game. You know, he just wants his team to do well. He wants his team to get better. And he holds us to, you know, a certain standard, you know, that I respect and I love. So uh, I'm definitely happy for him. And he he's just a workaholic. He's he's constantly working. He's constantly checking in on me, checking in on everybody. Um, so he's a great GM. I'm happy for him, you know, his promotion in his next few years here, for sure. Josh? Brad, how does... How close is this team, given how new it is, as you've ne mentioned, to developing an identity? Uh, that's a that's a great question. Um, I don't know. I don't really. I mean, we want to be a defensive team, um, and basically feed off of that. And I don't know. I mean, I don't. I, I kind of. I guess I'll leave that to you guys. I don't want to put us in a box more or less, you know, uh, we're very versatile in a lot of ways, uh, but more than anything, our, our first mindset is getting stops, you know, so you could say our, our identity will be a, a strong minded defensive team, you know, that's going to try to get out and run and put some points on the board. I, I don't know exactly what the identity <laughs> is either, but, but if it turns, I mean, you're only 16 games in and no one understands how early it is more than you, mm -hmm. but if, the, if this does wind up being the team's identity, you know, tough, um, finding ways to win, uh, would that be a bad thing? No. The only thing that matters is winning games, you know. So if the, the win column is steady going up, you know, who, who gives a damn? You know, we, we we make it work. Like, it was ugly tonight. Like, how many times I had? Shouldn't have to look that close. It should be right in my face. Oh, there it is. Yeah, six. So, I mean, it's just, it's a lot of stuff we have to get better at. It's not perfect. It's ugly. Uh, but we find ways to win. So we love that. But, you know, at the same time, in order to be a great team and, you know, win deep in the playoffs and get further, you know, we have to, we have to clean up a lot of this stuff. So. Thank you very much. Yeah. Neil. Hey, Brad, when, Trez gets that stop, you kind of just, you know, crossed your arm and kind of stared at him. Is that just kind of a, oh, you're a bad man, Trez, or explain that celebration? Yeah, a little bit. You know, Trez was saying he had the seatbelts on. So, you know, I, I did the little seatbelt gesture and, and stared at my man's. 
because uh, he he's a, he's a very he's our he's our energy man. Trez gets us going. Uh, you know, to see him always passionate about the game, like he loves the game, he loves hoops, like, and it's just fun to be around guys like that who have your back. Like, talks trash. He's gonna hit the other opponent. Like, if something bad happens to me, like he's like a big brother out there. So you know, it's always good to be able to have. I'll call him a bash brother. He's a bash brother out there. So it's always good to have a guy like that. Then a bit of a random question. Last season, you guys would, after starting lineups, you know, the starters would have their little, you know, huddle. Bench would have theirs. This year, you guys are just doing, you know, whole roster together. Mm -hmm. How did that come about? Did somebody in particular say, oh, let's do this? Unique observation, Neil. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, that's a, that's a great one because uh, that is very true. I actually took it upon myself earlier this year and said, you know, whatever we do, we have to do it collectively as a team. We don't have two groups. You know, it's not about starters. It's not about the bench. You know, it's us together as a group and as a team, you know, so let's, let's find something to get us going have some fun before we get out there and really go to war with each other. So we just jump up around like a little mosh pit and, you know, hit each other. Don't, don't get hurt doing anything crazy, but you know, we just, we try to get each other going get our energy going, get our juices. Thanks Brad. That's all the time we have, Brad. Thank you. Christian Neal. Man, very observant. <laughs> in LA, I like Sun Life and Creation. Would actually like to franchise one out here. But since I don't know of any, I've been frequenting uh, Fruitive and getting some of their produce blends. It's very healthy stuff. So <laughs> always support uh, people that I like. Get on toast. Oh, no, I don't like avocado toast. I'm, mm -mm, not my thing. Spencer, we'll start whenever you're ready. Don't worry. Spencer, we know we've asked you a million times about, you know, coming through in the clutch and then down the stretch and everything like that. But what is the key to being a good, reliable fourth quarter player for you? Um, I mean, uh, I think I've said it various different ways. Uh, you know, one, like I'm always trying to make the right place. So I feel like my heart's in the right place. So I'm not, you know, I'm saying in a situation where I'm hesitating from that standpoint. And then also, you know, I've made shots before. I trust the work that I put in. And so I don't hesitate from that standpoint either. And I feel like the reason why people hesitate in the fourth quarter, hesitate in the clutch in general is because they're not trusting of something. You know what I'm saying? Whether it's the work that they put in or, you know, whether they feel like they're being selfish with the shots they take or the turnover that they got or whatever. Like, I ain't got none of that. So when I was talking about like not caring, it wasn't from the standpoint of like, you know, not wanting to win the game. Obviously, I always want to win the game, but I just I want to live the consequences. I've been through worse. Unseld said that it was an ugly win, but you still have to kind of do the right things at the right time. What were you guys able to take advantage of on defense in the fourth? Um, I mean, obviously we we try to get mismatches, try to get ball movement, um, so that Brad can get downhill, we can get into actions, and then. You know, we were fortunate enough to hit some shots as well, and, and they uh, had some terms to miss shots. So, you know, anytime you come back from 16 down, it's kind of the same thing I said as New Orleans, right? Like, teams can give you a chance, but you also got to go out there and take it, you know? So they they did their part in, in kind of helping us as well. Through uh, the first three quarters, you had six points, two of seven. And then in the fourth, you have 10 points, four of four. How did you kind of just flip a switch when you guys needed it most? Oh, I mean, I ain't going to say it's flipping a switch. I, I hit the shots. So that was, that's a big difference in the switch. Um, you know, it's just sometimes people defend a little different in the fourth. I think, um, you know, I caught a couple of swing passes, we able to make some plays, uh, you know, attack some closeouts, just stuff like that. Um, but I try to gauge flow in, in terms of how the team plays. I mean, obviously, it's a big key to get Brad going. We also want to keep the rest of our guys into it. So, you know, there's always going to be a time for me to be aggressive and, you know, trying to win a game. And what does it say about this team to to kind of win ugly? You know, you had a game, uh, scored 15 points in the second quarter, then you guys mm -hmm. found a way to win uh, against a tough team. Just kind of like, what does this win say about you guys? No, I mean, I think it speaks to our greediness. We've, we've continued to kind of have that as our calling card along with our defense the, the entire year. I think that bodes well for uh, tough playoff type basketball. Um, but obviously, we'd also like to get our offense on track as well. You guys are now seven and one at home. Uh, how important is it to have success, you know, here? And what was the atmosphere like tonight? Uh, good teams protect home court. So obviously uh, you want to be a good team. You got to you got to do that for sure. Um, and then in terms of the crowd, I mean, it was rocking. So I heard a couple of heat chants, though, so we can do a little bit better there. But obviously we won. So let's let's flip some of them fans, too. A, a lot of comebacks this season, second half deficits, the, the one against Boston down six and first overtime. 
you know, you guys have talked about resiliency, that being a key, but in the midst of it, when you're on the court, when you guys are talking to each other, you know, during a timeout or whatever, how do you kind of keep your heads cool? You know, I think Brad said earlier, you know, you're not pointing the fingers at each other and stuff like that. What's the key to kind of stay calm in those moments? Um, knowing that we've been there before, uh, believing that we can win, and then also uh, just trying to make the right play. Uh, to Brad's point, yeah, as long as you're not pointing the finger and, and bickering, then you you don't um, allow for things to snowball. So you can kind of stay the course, try to do the right thing, you hit a couple of shots, and, you know, it's on and popping. Hey, when you talk about uh, putting in the work in uh, so you could play more freely in the fourth quarter, are you do you visualize sort of playing in the fourth quarter when you are practicing? Um, yeah, so when I talk about the work, I'm talking about, you know, mostly summertime. Um, I feel like I have one of the hardest routines, you know what I'm saying, in the league. Um, visualization, to a certain extent, is a part of that. Um, I mean, whether it's making a certain amount of row or, or countdowns or when I play ones, being under certain stipulations and duress, like that maybe the other guys I'm playing with aren't, like you, you try to make that stuff so so hard and, and difficult that the game becomes more easy. So uh, that's more so what I meant. And then, you know, so far it's it, it's worked in, in terms of, you know, being able to build on my career and, and being able to hit those type of shots. KCP as low key on courting with you guys as he is in front of us. Uh, no, no. Nah. Can you give me an, an example? Nah. <laughs> nah, I mean, he just, he speaks. I know he probably don't speak to y'all, so, but he speaks to us. So he's not, he's not as low key. I mean, he's a chill guy. He's not like trans or nothing. You know what I'm saying? But yeah, exactly. Like, but nah, he, he speaks. Chris Jones. Hey Spencer, congratulations on the win, first of all. Uh, those turnaround wins, those uh, comebacks, what did sign of growth and what sign of progress are for you as a team? Um, I think a sign of growth and progress will be when we don't find ourselves down and we don't have poor second and third quarters and, you know, we're able to start stringing together wins and sustain the lead from start to finish. And for you, how... As the season goes on, as the games goes on, how more comfortable you feel on your role, and what what is your expectation for the rest for the next games? Um, I mean, it, obviously, with season continuing to go on, we're going to learn each other and all continue to get more comfortable. I mean, also the more the season goes on, the further I get away from, you know, my my surgery date. So just body wise, everything I continue to feel. Uh, better and better and better. Um, and then as far as role goes, I mean, I told y'all from the beginning, like secondary playmaker, that's, that's why they brought me here. So, you know, whatever that means at the time, whether that's calling the right play at the right time. Um, you know, today you saw me setting screens for Brad because there were points in time where, you know, Tyler Hero was guarding me and we were trying to get certain matchups so we could get the switch. Um, you know, just, just starts at secondary playmaker and, you know, just using IQ to try to find the, the, the right place at the right time. Thank you very much. Josh. Spencer, I know it's just game 16 in an 82 game season and uh, playoffs after that, but uh, how close is this team to forming an identity, whatever it is? Yeah, I mean, I think in terms of uh, defense and, and greediness and, and a never say die attitude, we have an identity. And I think obviously with, with Brad being our head of the state, we have an identity on offense. So, you know, I think um, things will continue to form and round themselves out. We're a new group. We, we've literally only played together, what, 19 games, you count preseason, something like that. Um, so it's not perfect, but we have the, the beginnings of that. Thank you. Last question to Neil. Hey, Spencer. Um, so 20% 20, 20 into the regular season, where would you say your comfort level is and just knowing, okay, when it's your time to assert yourself or when it's your time to get other people their touches and always trying to find that balance? Uh, I mean, that's something that's just going to continue to unfold. I mean, the, the good news is while I'm learning that, we're still getting wins. So that's uh, that's the main thing. But, uh, no, I mean, obviously you want to you get Brad involved first and foremost. And then from there, like I said, the, the psychology of our group, you want to keep everybody engaged. So, you know, you want to get Pope, Coos, Trez involved, um, just, just keeping the morale high and everybody uh, going. Um, 
from there, like I told you, I feel like I can get a shot at any time. So I'll, I'll continue to fill it out, um, try to make better decisions. Um, just keep getting 1% better every day. Thanks, Spencer. Bro. That's it, Spencer. Thank you. No problem. Shit, uh, oh, yeah. There we go. They got these at the uh, at the facility, but I'll be drinking these too, plant-based protein. Um, holla at me. I, I like free stuff. <laughs> I shout out your brand. I do it on Instagram, whatever you need. Um, I'm not even greedy with the money, but actually my agent, was, he'd be mad at that. So yeah, pay me too in Bitcoin. There you go. <laughs> Don't get it confused. I'm not vegetarian. Um, mostly throughout the day, I do do plant-based things, um, but my guilty pleasure is Wagyu. So, <laughs> hey, listen, one thing, uh, as you can see, I dress in Lululemon and other cheap stuff all day. Oh, Lululemon's not cheap, but other like free stuff and, and basketball type apparel. Food, I do not uh, spare expense. That's that's where I spend my money. Food. So, y'all want to go out to eat? Oh, uh, yeah. Little living in the closet, Wagyu in the fridge. Uh, I'm not Japanese. Hey, listen, bro. We can hit Nobu if you want to. What you want to do out in LA? I was so hurt when they closed Roku Sunset. Oh, my God. So much better than Benny Honey. I have no idea, but it's okay. Hey, listen. We should all go out to dinner at some point in time. I like, I like wine, too. <laughs> hey, oh, oh, it's on me. Hey, listen, it's on me. Hey, I'll take, really? All right, boss, listen, hey, wine during season, tequila in the off season. Hey, stay thirsty, my friends. <laughs>